How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through the best players from now to the end of the season, as well as a quick wildcard draft. Now we have returned to making YouTube videos, so don't worry, I've not disappeared on you guys, but for the past week, I've been in Namibia, but now I'm back at my home and therefore the videos will continue to flow from now to the end of game week 38. But going on to today's video, the reason why I've combined these two topics is that if you're looking at the best players from now to game week 38, you're pretty much looking at a wildcard draft, and therefore I've decided to combine the two videos as I was requested over my Twitter page at DaveyFPL to create a wildcard draft. So first up, I've kind of split the teams into three categories, nice fixtures from now to the end of the season, the double doublers, and then finally the top six teams that I think we all should be focusing on. Then right at the end of the video, I'm going to kind of combine all those teams, create the best wildcard draft as possible, so for you guys stay till the end. But without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So the first topic that I want to kind of go over, I know that we usually go over kind of a game week schedule from now to the end of the season. We usually go over Mikkel Tokfam's diagram, but now I'm going to be going over Ben Krellen's game week planner, just because I think the fixtures are going to be quite integral to this video. So as you always do, shout out to Ben Krellen over on Twitter. You guys can go follow him. The FPL double slash blank game week guru. I'm pretty sure all of you guys know him. Follow him so that he does get to about 200k followers as he's mighty close. So in terms of Ben Krillin's game week schedule, you guys can see that there are three double game weeks that have been confirmed. Double game week 34, the one that's just kind of passed where Chelsea had a nice double as well as United. We then have the upcoming game week, game week 35, a single game week. We then have game week 36 and game week 37. Game week 36, the big double for the remainder of the season, whereas game week 37 is a slightly smaller one, but it's a little bit more differential. Now, first off, I just want to address the situation with the likely such the unlikely double game weeks. That's going to be for Manchester City. And unfortunately, we have not had an update on their double game week. Is it going to be 36? Is it going to be 37? I can't really tell you. But there have been some initial predictions as because it's not been announced yet, some people are saying that it's more likely to be in 37. So that's the first disclaimer of this video is that obviously the Man City double is going to be heavily integral to your guys' chip strategy. And that's why today's video was actually planned to be a chip strategy video. But since there's been an announcement, I think it's slightly useless. But nevertheless, there's a ton of teams to talk about besides Manchester City. I just wanted to tell you guys about that one because it might throw a little bit of span into the works with your transfer plan as well as your chip strategy. Now, I don't really focus on the game weeks too much here. I'm going to be taking you guys through my favorite teams and the best fixtures you guys can get into your teams. I just kind of wanted to show you guys the game week schedule from now to the end of the season and what game weeks you guys should focus on. You guys can pause the video or simply go over to Ben Krellin's uh, kind of Twitter page to get this graphic as now we're going to proceed to the teams. So the first category of teams that I want to talk about are going to be the teams that have nice fixtures. Now these are teams that are not in the current top six of the Premier League and also teams that don't have a double-double but still some relatively good fixtures from now to Game Week 38. Now we'll be only focusing on Game Week 35, 36 and 37 just because 38 is a little bit in the future and I think for that wild card you want to focus on the upcoming doubles and when Game Week 38 comes you can simply bring in whoever you want. So the first team I want to talk about is going to be Crystal Palace, a team that have some very nice differentials as well as some nice budget enablers. And you guys will see in the wildcard draft, I've chosen one or two of them. Now in terms of the upcoming fixtures, in game week 35 they have Southampton away, they then have Watford at home in game week 36. Now I have actually rated these fixtures according to my own rating scale. A green is for a great fixture, a white is for a medium fixture, and then a red is for a bad fixture. As you guys can see, Crystal Palace have no medium or hard fixtures, only green as you see on the screen there. They have a nice double in 37 of Villa away and then Everton away as well. Now the thing I like about uh, Crystal Palace is they are kind of safe in the Premier League so they might be on the beach but they are playing a nice brand of football under Patrick Vieira and especially from a defensive department those defenders are quite cheap and also getting those clean sheets. Now from an attacking point of view you've got a Matete in the front line I do worry slightly about him though as there has been some rotation with a Benteke or an Eduard but in terms of the other departments a midfielder like a Zaha is probably going to be a constant in that starting 11. That Watford game in 36 is going to be quite enticing especially because most people on a free or maybe on those free transfers might not bring in a Wilfred Zaha or Mateta just because they are focusing on some double game week players but from a single game week point of view that's pretty much one of the best fixtures to go for. Now it's a little bit unfortunate there are two away games in 37 because I think if these are home games would have been absolutely absolute class for them and that might be the only downer on that double game week. We're then going to move on to the next team and that's going to be a team that's currently in the relegation battle, are currently last in the Premier League and that's going to be Norwich. 
So in terms of Norwich, I guess the relegation battle might be coming to a close for them. I know there might be a slither of hope for you Norwich fans, but I just generally think the general public are saying they will be going down and therefore there might be the caveat of them getting relegated and therefore having some rotation. But let's just say that Norwich are still going to be in the Prem for the foreseeable future or at least the next couple of game weeks. They're going to be fighting for it in front of their home crowd, might put on quite a good show. Then maybe some Norwich assets are going to be quite attractive. Now in terms of the fixtures, kind of medium to nice fixtures in my opinion. In game week 35, they have Aston Villa away. Then in game week 36 they have a double of West Ham at home and Leicester away then in game week 37 they have a single game week against Wolves away now I know what you're thinking that double game week 36 might not actually be that attractive West Ham and Leicester two kind of medium fixtures they have been picking up form over these prior game weeks but what I will mention is that both these two sides are in the other European competitions so the Conference League for Leicester and the Europa League for West Ham and depending on how they progress in these semi-finals they might be actually focusing on that from now to the end of the season so both these teams might rotate in 36 and then Norwich have some relatively okay fixtures, especially for a team where Puku is quite cheap in that forward line. Now, no, I won't be going for any of the defenders. I think from a defensive point of view, pretty bad. But I mean, a Puki at his price point could be good value for money. The next team, like Norwich, also going to be in the relegation battle. I think they might be leaving it a little bit too late. It's going to be Watford, and they are currently second last in the Prem. Now, the Watford assets have been actually quite popular over this entire season. A Dennis, a Josh King, even Hernandez recently have been players that have kind of sprung up in most people's teams, but they are quite hard to bring in when most managers have kind of burnt that bridge early on in the season. In terms of the fixtures, though, great fixtures coming up. Burnley at home in 35. In game week 36, they have a double of Crystal Palace away and Everton at home. And then finally, in game week 37, they have Leicester at home where Leicester might also be still rotating. Now the Burnley at home fixture, a classic six-pointer there, but I do think Watford and Forshee will be going down to the championship. Then Crystal Palace away and Everton at home. Everton at home, another six-pointer in terms of that relegation battle. Now Hodgson has kind of showed them up a little bit defensively, but I still won't be bringing any of the defenders. But a Josh King or a Dennis, or maybe a Jao Pedro, could be one of those forwards that you do bring in. Unfortunately, I think most people won't be bringing these assets unless they want some cheap forwards, as the midfielders and the defenders can't be trusted. I guess the last option is going to be cycling GK himself, Ben Foster, a cheap enough goalkeeper. So if you guys are bench boosting, I would look to include him. But now luckily we've kind of left the relegation battle behind. I'm going to be focusing on the top six or kind of the top six standings right now. These are going to be teams that are currently competing for the Champions League as well as the title. Now the reason I want to highlight these teams is that as I mentioned with the prior points, they're going to still have stuff to play for and therefore they could be putting on some good performances or at least they have to if they want to get that achievement at the end of the season. So the first team to talk about is going to be Spurs who are currently are choking the top four race. I don't really know what's happened to them. They went from one of the teams with the best XGs in the Premier League to not having a shot on target in the prior two games and therefore I'm slightly worried about those Spurs assets. Added to that, the fixtures upcoming aren't that great. Leicester at home is a perfectly fine one with the prime mentioned uh, European competition for Leicester. So they might heavily rotate on the weekend. But in terms of the game week 36 double, it's Liverpool away and Arsenal at home. So Liverpool away, any kind of game against Liverpool is going to be a bad one. That's why I've rated it as a red fixture. But then the North London derbies added extra spice with the top four race. So that game might be quite a tight one, might be quite a high scoring one, who kind of knows. But I think the Spurs assets with the current form are looking to be transferred out of my own team. But then they do have a nice fixture in game week 37 against Burnley at home. That could be a great fixture there. But that might also be a tight one with Burnley looking to secure another Premier League appearance. So definitely in terms of the top six teams, the Spurs assets in double game week 36 aren't that attractive. And therefore I might not go with too many of them on my wildcard draft. We're then going to go to the other North London team. It's going to be Arsenal and their fixtures are against West Ham away on the weekend, which might be also like Spurs, a heavily rotated West Ham side just because of their Europa League involvement. But then in terms of the double and 36, Leeds at home and Spurs away. Great fixture against Leeds, but that Spurs game could go either way. And then finally in 37, we have Newcastle away. Great fixture on paper there, but Newcastle have improved, especially at their home ground. Their defense is pretty assured, but their attack isn't the greatest. So in terms of Arsenal, definitely a sucker if he's going to be fine after the knock he picked up in game week 34. You could also go for maybe one of the defenders. Ben White's quite cheap. If Tomo Yasu does come back, he doesn't really get that forward, but you might be looking at a Cedric. A Tavares could be an interesting punt to go for, but I simply don't trust him. But then there are the usual midfielders, and an Nketi in that forward line looks quite strong. But the way I'm kind of summing up Arsenal right now is that I think they provide some nice budget options, but also that drive to finish in the top four. We then move on to the team that's probably the most secured in most people's selections, or at least in the FPL teams. It's going to be Liverpool are currently challenging for the title against Manchester City. Now, Liverpool do play tomorrow night in terms of the Champions League, so watch out for them against Villarreal. That game will give us quite a good indication to who probably will start on the weekend against Newcastle away. In terms of the double game week, Spurs at home and Aston Villa away, a relatively fine double in my opinion. That Spurs game might be quite close, but I do expect Liverpool to beat Aston Villa quite comfortably. Finally, Southampton away, conceding quite a few in terms of the defensive department, so I do expect 
expect Liverpool to do quite well there. You just got to kind of hope that your main assets do start. We're now going to move on to two teams that I think there's a lot more to them besides the fixtures and the players. The first team is going to be Chelsea. We obviously have seen some rotation with that Chelsea lineup. They do have the FA Cup final coming up against Liverpool, where people are saying they might rotate for that Leeds away game in 36. But in terms of 35, they do have Everton away. And 36, they do have another double against Wolves at home. Moving on to game week 37, they have Leicester at home. And depending where Leicester are in the Premier League and also the European competition, that game might be quite easy for Chelsea. But I do think the current thing with Chelsea is the rotation. So that Leeds game does happen a couple of days before the FA Cup final. So what the general consensus is that Chelsea will rotate their main options and that probably will be a Havertz amount and maybe even a Reese James or an Alonso. So that double game week 36 might only be a single game against Wolves at home. Is that a good enough week? I don't know. Wolves are kind of a team that doesn't concede too many, but they also don't score too many as well. So I think in terms of my wildcard draft, I might not include that many Chelsea options, but I do think if you keep them, just keep hold of them because they might play both in 36. And then moving on to the final team to talk about, it's going to be Man City. And as mentioned earlier on, we don't exactly know when that double will happen, either 36 or 37. And therefore that Wolves away game, we don't exactly know where it's going to take place. But in terms of Man City, a game week 35 fixture against Leeds away is perfectly fine in my opinion. And I do think it's going to be quite a high score from an attacking point of view. You just got to kind of hope that they don't concede for Cancelo or Laporte. Currently, I am hoping for game week 37 double for them just because I want to free it on that week. And a Man City triple up will look quite nice on a free it. But I just want to kind of talk about uh, Man City in a little bit more detail, but unfortunately I can't include too many of their assets just because we don't have speculation, but I will include where you guys can fit one or two of their options in, in terms of their attack. The final team category to go over is going to be the double doublers, and these are teams that double in 36 and 37, and therefore if you guys don't have a chip like a free it, I definitely would be looking at these assets. So the first team is yet another relegation battle squad. They have a double in 36 and 37. The game with 35 fixtures are too strong against Chelsea at home, so I would bench them if you do include them on a wild card. But in terms of game week 36, two away games against Leicester and Watford, great fix on paper there. Then in terms of 37, Brentford at home and Crystal Palace at home, two teams that I've rated as a medium because they have improved in form over the prior game weeks. But I definitely think that I would include one or two of these Everton assets because they are quite cheap. And with these two double game week fixtures, they do have some nice fixtures coming up. The next team to talk about is going to be a team that has had a lot of doubles over these prior game weeks. It's going to be Leicester City, who are currently in the Conference League. Now, they do have two double game weeks. In game week 36, they have Everton at home and Norwich at home. Perfectly strong game week there. I mean, just look at those fixtures. Two relegation battle squads. Great fixtures from an attacking and a defensive point of view. Then in game week 37, they add Watford to that, but also have Chelsea away. Now, I'm really hoping that maybe Leicester got out of this Conference League. A little bit selfish there, but in terms of their F4 assets, great fixtures coming up. And therefore, I definitely want a Madison or a Barnes if they are going to start both. But unfortunately, like these other assets, can't really predict is going to start out of this Leicester team. And Brendan Rodgers has been rotating quite heavily over these prior game weeks. So let's take it as it comes in terms of Leicester. Let's see how they go in the European competitions. If they are knocked out, I'll be heavily tempted to include one of the two of them on my wildcard team. The last team to talk about with a double-double is going to be Aston Villa, my personal favorite in terms of the fixtures and also the team, just because I don't think there'll be too much rotation under Stevie G. The thing about Aston Villa that's quite nice is they have Norwich at home in game week 35, then they have Burnley away in 36, and Burnley at home again in 37. Combined with that is Liverpool at home and Crystal Palace at home, not the best fixtures in the world there, but Burnley and back-to-back -back game weeks could be quite attractive. But for me, the nice thing about Aston Villa, as I mentioned, is 35, you can bring these assets in if they do perform against Norwich, which is expected. That's quite nice for you. And then you have two doubles coming up where they should score quite well. The only thing about Villa is that you have to go for an option that's quite nailed, a Coutinho Cash are my personal favorites, but you can also include a Watkins if you guys do desire. So that's going to kind of wrap up all the teams I've spoken about. Drop it down in the comments below if there's a team that I haven't talked about. I'll discuss that in the reply if you want me to, but currently these are my favorite teams that I'd go for in terms of transfers and also wildcards. So now let's talk about that wildcard draft, as I promised you guys in the introduction, talking about the best teams and the best players. The best way to sum this up is to pick a starting 15 or starting 11 that I think will score the most points from now to the end of the season. Now guys, please remember that team value is a thing and my team value might be better or worse than you. So if you guys can make upgrades, I would do that. And also I want to mention about the chip strategy. So currently this team is going to be quite suited to those of you who want to bench boost in 36 or 37. And the reason for that is if you guys aren't going to bench boost, you can simply downgrade the bench and upgrade your starting 11. But it's easier to downgrade than upgrade, so that's why I covered this team with the bench boost. And in terms of the free it, I've assumed you guys have no free it's, and therefore it's going to be the best team in terms of the double doubles. But if you guys do have any questions about the wildcard, drop it in the comments down below. Always are happy to help you guys. And if you guys do want to post your wildcard draft, drop them down below. Always like to see how you guys are kind of thinking. 
So let's start off with our goalkeeper department, and this is going to be pretty template in terms of wild cards. A prior game week in 34 and 35, it's going to be Schmeichel and then also Ben Foster. So Foster, we've spoken about Watford, have some nice doubles coming up, also is relatively cheap. On a bench boost, perfectly adequate for that, but I do think that Schmeichel with that double-double is the most nailed Leicester option to go for from a defensive department. You guys saw those fixtures for Leicester, simply outstanding in 36 and 37, and that's why I do want a Leicester coverage in that defensive department, and that's why I've gone for the 4.9 goalkeeper. There are some other assets to go for, but I'd rather go for those outfielders as Schmeichel is nailed, whereas one of the other Leicester outfield defenders might not be. We then can move on to our defensive department with a double up in the Liverpool defense. It's Trent and Robbo, and they do come in quite expensive, but I think they've proved their weight in gold over these prior game weeks. Currently, Robertson's actually outperforming Trent, so if you guys want to go a little bit cheaper, maybe a bit more differential, drop Trent and keep Robertson, then you could also go for maybe a Cancelo in that back line. The reason I've not gone for a Cancelo and I've gone for a Laporte is that Cancelo is too expensive for this current draft, but if you guys do have more money, you can simply upgrade him to Cancelo, as I do think he's the favorite option to go for. Laporte, though, should be nailed with Stones out injured. Diaz is back from that injury, but I do think that Laporte is the first choice with him and therefore should start most of the Premier League games for Man City. Matty Cash comes in as our Aston Villa defender of choice, offers that attacking threat and that defensive threat as he's shown in the Pride double. The final defender, Ben White, is simply cheap enough and I wanted some Arsenal coverage, so if you guys are going to bench boost, I would go for a Ben White as the less that home game does look quite nice. I just think I prefer the centre back over Tavares or Cedric as I do think he's more nailed, doesn't score or assist the most but there is always a potential of one attacking return. We then can move on to our midfield apartment which I'm super happy about, we do have kind of a 4, a nailed 4 and then we have a cheap option Gordon at the end, I just think with those Everton doubles coming up Gordon provides massive value and against Liverpool was causing them a couple of problems in behind that defence. 4.6 is a steal for him and I do think if Everton want to stay up Gordon will start most games and therefore he's got to kind of hope that he gets an attacking return. The rest of the midfield is pretty template in my opinion. We have Salah, Son and Saku are owned by most managers in the top 10k. But add a Coutinho with that double-double, I do think it's one of the most nailed Aston Villa players to kind of get. Now here comes the first talking point that you guys might not agree with. I've gone with Human Son even though I've said that the double in 36 isn't that strong. And therefore if Man City do double in 36, I would go with Foden, Mores, or maybe even a Sterling or De Bruyne if you guys can afford them instead of Son just because I do favour their double. So that might be the first kind of a point that we talk about. That's where I would include a Man City at midfield if you guys do go for one. I would downgrade Son or upgrade Son to whoever you guys want from Man City. Saka, if he does recover from a knock, is a great asset. You guys seen his value in the prior game weeks. Now that he's on penalties and with Lacazette out of the team, I do think from now to the end of the season, going to score quite well. And now moving on to our forward line, I've gone for a Charleston in that forward department. Also has that double-double with Everton. Is the most nailed striker to go for. DCL is not in the squad currently. So therefore, I think the Brazilian is a nice option to go for even with his antics against Liverpool in the prior game week. The fact of the matter is, in FPL this season, there's not that many forwards to go for, and therefore I think I would take a punt on the Brazilian from Everton. Oli Watkins then completes our front two, I think from an Aston Villa point of view, should start most games, and with those back-to-back -back doubles, I think he should get some points, hopefully, he just has to find those shooting boots. And then our final forward to go for is going to be a cheap option, I've mentioned Crystal Palace's fixtures, it's Monteta at 5.3, he's going to kind of hope that he starts most games, which might be a concern with that Crystal Palace rotation. Now last time against Leeds, Crystal Palace didn't do as well as I would have liked to, but I think Mateta should still hold that starting spot, you just got to kind of hope that he does. Now in terms of the overall team balance, my own team value I was left with 0.1 after this draft, but as I said, if you guys can afford an upgrade, do it, but if you can't afford, maybe downgrade a son to a cheaper option. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this draft, is it a good draft, is it a bad one, and also drop your chip strategy down below, and I could maybe help you guys out with one or two changes. But this is the best wrap of the video guys, hopefully you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like if you did, and subscribe if you never subscribed yet, I'll be seeing you guys for a team selection tomorrow, and then an ultimate guide to Game Week 35 coming up on Thursday, so make sure you guys subscribe and check those videos out. But I'm signing off, it's been Davey FPL, and I'm out, cheers, bye.